Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of the Honda Resource. On today's episode, we're going to be working on my cousin's CRV. This is a 99 to 01. I'm not exactly sure. I haven't looked at the VIN yet. Um, it's a 9901. I know that because of the interior and the engine configuration. Um, we're going to be doing several things to this one, including, uh, well, I've already replaced the uh, driver window regulator uh, off camera, uh, but we're going to be doing several things to the engine. Uh, it smokes uh, at idle. So we're going to be putting some valve seals in it, time belt water pump because the uh, water pump is seeping a little bit of coolant. And we're going to be uh, doing the valve cover gasket, oil pan gasket, cam, um, the cam seal here on the end, and then the distributor o-ring, both cam seals down here, and the crankshaft seal at the bottom. Uh, so there's quite a few things that are going to get done on this one. I'm going to put it on time lapse while I'm removing uh, most of this stuff. I've already got videos on doing the oil pan gasket as well as the cam seal here on the end and distributor o-ring and time belt. Put links in the description if you're interested in any of those. So we've got it pretty much torn down to where we can begin to do the valve seals now. We've got to take the camshafts out and to do that you just take out these little 10 millimeter bolts on each of these cam caps, take the cams out, take all these rocker assemblies out. Now I do recommend uh, laying them out on like a sheet of cardboard or something and keep them in order. That way the adjustments are relatively close. I would also recommend adjusting your valves once you complete uh, this job since you've had the camshafts out. Uh, if you need to know how to do a valve latch adjustment, check the video out up here in the top right corner and that'll show you how to do that. Um, but now I've got it pretty much torn down. I did a few extra little things that you <clears throat> maybe you wouldn't necessarily have to do if uh, you're just doing the valve latch or the, um, the valve seal such as drain the coolant and the oil and that stuff because I'm also doing time belt water pump. And I just went ahead and knocked that stuff out while it's down there, as well as taking it, uh, the piece of the exhaust off. Um, that's actually right here. Um, you know, you won't have to take that exhaust um, pipe off if you're just doing the valve seal. So I don't want to misguide you there. So I took that off purely due to the oil pan gasket. Um, so I'm just trying to work all this stuff into one and uh, maximize the time that I'm putting in on this. So, um, or well, I guess technically be minimizing the time but ma maximizing the time that I have to put actually into it making the most of it essentially but it's minimizing the overall time to do this job uh, but right now I'll go ahead and pop these camshafts out and uh, get a sheet of cardboard over here and lay all these um, these caps or the uh, rockers out on the cardboard that way we can kind of keep some kind of order with those so let's get it all right so what i did there <clears throat> i took all the exhaust out the the cam caps um, that are basically they're all numbered one through six uh, so like E1 is also one, E2 is also two so on 
and then I laid them out all the uh, exhaust rockers. So one through six, or I mean, sorry, one through four cylinders. Uh, so each each cylinder has two uh, two of these rockers, and uh, so they're in order how they came off. The same thing with the intake ones over here. So we have intake one through six on the caps, and then all the rockers are one through four uh, accordingly. And then if uh, you saw me there prying on it camshaft basically I was just getting under this area where the lobe isn't uh, just prying it up a little bit to get those cam caps to pop loose uh, once I had them loose I wasn't putting a lot of a lot of force on that so don't uh, over exert a lot of or don't exert a lot of force onto the camshafts and don't put anything on the lobes because you don't want to mess up your camshafts I will be taking these gears off of this uh, one we go to reassemble to be able to replace those cam seals um, but if you weren't replacing the cam seals you could just take them out like this and put them back in like this piece of cake all right there are a few tools that will be required that are specialty tools for doing the valve seals uh, one is this uh, pair of pliers uh, basically they just have these little uh, grooves in here and just reach down on the valve seal and pull it out uh, I'll put a link for all these tools in the description. And then we have a, a Lyle uh, valve keeper remover installer kit. Um, this would be um, very useful for removing the um, valve keepers and reinstalling them. Uh, I've seen people that have the kits that like press down on them and all this other stuff. This this right here works wonders. Um, then we just got some nylon rope. Um, that's the hold the valves up. We'll take the spark plugs out and then um, put the piston all the way down. Uh, these motors are non-interference so you don't have to worry about the valve contact and the piston. Uh, so what we'll do is we'll take a spark plug out. We'll put a screwdriver down in the cylinder. I'll show you all this in a minute. But uh, we'll put a screwdriver down in the cylinder so you know when the, the piston is all the way at the bottom. And then uh, once it's all the way at the bottom we'll put as much of this rope in that cylinder as we can and then we'll rotate the crankshaft to where the piston pushes this rope up into the bottom of the valve and it holds the valve up to where we can use this tool to uh, remove the keepers it's a delicate process um, if you've never done it but it's still it can get a little bit frustrating at times um, but it's definitely possible to do it without removing the head and that's what we're after right now we're not trying to remove the head and we're trying to get this job done so let's get to it and uh, I'll kind of show you some more along the way all right so I got the spark plugs removed and I've got a long 3 8 extension this is probably like a 10 inch 12 inch extension something but uh, see if I put it down in cylinder 2 see how it goes far down because the piston is low to put it in cylinder 1 it's sitting on top of the piston. So the piston one is up right now. And so piston one and four will be at the same spot or piston two and three will also be at the same spot. So, um, so I'm gonna start with cylinder two or three since they're already down without me having to rotate it. Um, so yeah, let me get some rope stuffed into these and then we'll um, rotate the motor to where it'll shove that rope up into the bottom of the valves and we'll get one of those uh, keepers off and I'll show you how to do that. Alright, so I got a good bit of that rope <clears throat> shoved down in that, probably, I don't know, several feet of it. So now what I've got to do is rotate the crankshaft until it pushes that piston up on that rope. And what it'll do, you'll know that it's bottomed out once the crankshaft stops moving. You can put the crankshaft bolt back in and use that to rotate it. But once it snugs down, uh, that's that's it. Don't try to you know rotate it past that. Once it's snug, leave it. Um, so now we're just going to rotate that and uh, we'll take these uh, valve keepers out. 
All right, so I just rotated the crankshaft and got to work. You can see this is like down in there. All right, the piston is pushing up on that root and it's holding up the four valves that are on this cylinder. So we go with the ones that are directly on this cylinder. Don't mess with any of the other ones right now. So just these two and these two. So we'll go ahead and pop those caps off real quick and uh, then we'll be able to get to where the valve seal is. All right, so this, this Lyle tool actually comes with two, uh, two separate tools. All right, so the only one we need is a smaller one. This is a larger one for like different, um, different makes and models and that kind of stuff. Uh, I've always used the smaller one on the Honda, so uh, use the smaller one. So you'll use, you'll use it in this configuration to install the, the valve keepers, but to use it, you can remove this part. It just, it's got a magnet in here, so it just slides out. And you use this to remove them. The magnet in here is what's gonna catch the keepers. So we'll just use a little hammer, okay? And you just put it over the over the top of the valve here, and just that's all you gotta do. And see, there's your the top of the um, valve spring in there, and then your keepers are in there. So you just get a stick magnet and get those out, or a um, Gasket pick. So you can just use your gasket pick. You can get these out. Put them back in your keeper or your retainer here. So I got both of those out. And they're both back in there. So you need to put them back both in here before we reinstall it. So I'll just go ahead and do it as I pull them out. And then uh We'll be good to go here in just a few. Um, as you can see now, that uh, spring comes out. That's your valve spring, and that gives us access to the valves, the valve seal that's in here. And so what I do, take those pliers I was talking about, and then we'll get it around that valve seal. All right, squeeze a little bit, turn, and it comes right out. So there's your valve seal. So whenever, these do feel pretty crusty. So whenever we reinstall them, the intake ones are different than the exhaust. So just make sure that you're not uh, cross-contaminating and that you're actually putting the um, intake uh, valve, uh, valve seals on the intake and the exhaust valve seals on the exhaust. Uh, but you can see how that holds that valve up, that rope is. So without putting that rope in there, this valve stem would just fall down in there. And that's definitely not what we want. So, let me uh, round up my, my new valve seals and uh, we'll start putting those in. All right, so uh, I used the uh, uh, Molly gaskets and seals and stuff. And I really like these. They really do compare to OEM specs and um, usability. And you can see they are made in Japan, so you know they're decent quality. Um, so this is the exhaust one. That we're going to be using uh, the ends in seven eight. That's the part number. And then these are the intake <clears throat> ends in three four. And then what I do is I take a paint marker. I just write on there E or I. That way I know if it's in intake or exhaust. And I just usually just cut a slit in it with a razor blade and take them out individually one at a time. That way I don't get them mixed up and that kind of stuff. So to reinstall these, all you need is a 10 millimeter socket like this, and then it literally fits over the top of them perfectly and pushes them down on there. Just use an extension and just use your hand and bump it down on there. Pretty straightforward, pretty easy. Um, all right, so we'll put those up there where I can get them out. So. This is the intake side because the intake manifold is over here. This is the exhaust side. The exhaust manifold is over here. So we'll be using the intake seal. Okay. So we got one of these. So we'll slide it down over that. And then we'll take the 10 millimeter socket and go over the top of it. And just bump it down. Get it where we need to be. And that's it. Piece of cake. Um, so now. We'll put 
our spring back on. Okay. And then our retainer with our uh, keepers. Okay, and then we'll use our tool, right? Remember, it's in this configuration. And then we'll put it right in the center of that with this. And then all you gotta do is push down and it locks it in there. So let me show you how I locked it in there. So this is the one we just did right here. So you can see both of the keepers are in there. If it doesn't get both of the keepers in there, take it back out, you know, using your magnet. If it's only got one keeper holding it, take it back out, try it again. Sometimes I don't always get it on the first try. You know, um, sometimes you may need to readjust your rope, you know, rotate the cylinder down, put more rope in there where it holds it better. Um, but I mean, really, I mean, it's that simple. See, it didn't take a lot of time having to mess with a little tool to put on here to push those down and all the other stuff. And now we can do all four of these at the same time without having to move, move a tool around. So that's my, my take on it. So let's, uh, let's finish up these, uh, these four and then we'll move to the next cylinder. All right, so my GoPro's dying, so I had to put it on charger, and it's only got 11% right now. So I wasn't able to, to record while I was doing these four, but I've got all four of them done now. So now that I've got them done, I was gonna show you how to get the rope out. So basically, uh, just turn the crankshaft the opposite way or whatever, which way you turned it to uh, put the rope in. So you can see it didn't take a whole lot of turning, just to where you get the pressure off of it and start pulling the rope out. Now if it binds up, sometimes it does get stuck under the valve. I'll show you what to do in the event that it does, but it didn't. But if it does get stuck under a valve, just bump the top of the valve with a, the butt of a hammer or something, like the tail end of the hammer. And uh, while you're pulling up on the rope and then use the other hand to, to bump the top of the valves and it'll usually come right out. But I had about, it's about this much rope in there so it takes, it takes a little bit of time to put the that uh, rope in it but once you get the rope in it man you can really knock these out it took me probably um, five minutes to do all those so it's not bad at all so now I'm just gonna continue on and get the rest of these done so I've already got cylinder two done now I need to do one three and four so I'm gonna get them done while the GoPro charges and we'll be back so I got all those valve seals swapped out you can see my packs are empty now and here's all my old uh, valve seals so I just got to get that one little bit of rope back out knock this stuff off over here let's see turn that crank just a little bit let's see if we get this out of here bam all right so we're done with the rope now Got all those valve seals replaced. So now um, we can start reassembling the head, putting all of our rockers back in, the cam caps and the cams, all this stuff back in this head and get the same back assembled. It looks like it's about to come a little thunder bumper down here. Which that's west over here so generally the storms are coming this way and maybe this south I see a little bit of lightning so it may be south of me hopefully it won't get too much of it I know they got a bunch of flash floods and stuff going on today you hear that so anyway we're gonna get back to the CRV so what we're gonna do is, right now is we gotta do reassemble that head, like I was saying, and then um, put time belt, water pump, all that stuff on. Again, there's videos on my channel in the description showing how to do all the timing, as well as the oil pan gasket, doing valve lash adjustment, uh, the cam seal, and the uh, 
distributor o-ring over here so if you have any questions about any of this stuff and they're not addressed on any of those videos please drop the comment below and let me know what you, your questions or concerns are with uh, anything that you see on this job All right guys, so it's actually the next day now. Uh, just ran out of time last night, had to leave and go to work. And then uh, my helper was over here helping me a little bit and I was uh, just talking to him and stuff. Uh, but I left off with uh, putting the timing belt on and as you can see, I've got a little more done now. I've actually got all the timing covers on, all the accessory belts back on. Uh, I went ahead and did the oil pan gasket. So now really all that's left to do is to, um, do a valve lash adjustment and then um, put the valve cover gasket on. So it's pretty simple stuff. It's uh, like I said, there is videos on all this stuff if you haven't seen it already. So um, I'm gonna put it on a time lapse while I do the valve adjustment. Again, there's already a video for that. I, I mean, this video seems like redundant with me telling you there's a video for that. But I like to not be redundant in my uh, content. So. Um, there's no point in sitting here showing you a step-by-step -step on doing a valve flash adjustment if there's already a video for that. You know what I mean? So, um, I guess without further ado, let's knock out this valve flash adjustment, get this thing, some fluids back in it, and get it back to my cousin. All right, so, and now I've got everything back together, ready to start, got fluids in it. Uh, still got the coolant funnel on here just to bubble in once I start it up. If it's got any air pockets in it or whatever, it'll go ahead and get all the uh, coolant down in the engine. Since I pulled the oil pan and the engine is completely dry with oil previous to me putting oil back in it and the pickup tube and all that stuff is dry, I'm gonna go ahead and disconnect the distributor right here just so that it won't start. 
and then I'm going to spin it over, crank it over until the oil light goes off on the dash, making sure that I have oil pressure. So the oil light is the, one, the top left red one. <clears throat> It should go off here shortly. There it goes, see it went off. So now we can reconnect the distributor. Because it built oil pressure. All right, well, let's see if she'll start up. This car did have a Kelly converter code, so the engine light is on for that. Runs beautifully. Turn the AC off. Got a little bit of a high idle because it's cold. Running like a top. You can see there the Cool it bubbling a little bit. So it'll do its thing for a few minutes and then I'll go and pull it out and wash all this old oil and stuff off of it. And it's uh, ready for pickup. So, thanks so much for tuning in for this video. I know it was a long one. If you stuck through it, I do appreciate it. And uh, hope to see you on some more of my videos. Like I said, <laughs> all throughout the video, there's videos literally for almost everything I've done on my channel very detailed so if you need to check out any of those i will definitely link them all in the description uh check out the new merch that just came out i got some only hondas shirts uh they're fresh on the way just ordered them uh today actually so they're coming in from the screen printer i've got a very limited quantity quantity i think i ordered a total of uh 20 24 shirts and 24 hoodies so it's not it's not a lot you know I, but I, I don't have the uh, the means to have a bunch of uh, uh, merch on hand and uh, just doing what I can if that sells out I'll buy some more you know I'm not making a huge profit on it I'm going for quality over quantity on my stuff so I, I, I kind of spend more on the actual shirts themselves on the garments uh, because like this shirt here and all the other shirts that I sell are all next level 3600 and it's like the upper echelon of the, the garments uh, but they're very comfortable you know I, I sell my stuff because I want people to wear it I don't you know I don't want it to be a decorative item I don't want you to just wear it because it's the Honda resource I want you to wear the stuff because it's comfortable it feels good um, but yeah the uh, hoodies are um, Gildan heavy blend so it's a really good quality uh, hoodie and uh, I think you'll appreciate those especially now that it's fall and winter is fastly approaching so if you're interested in any of that links in the description for the website thanks again see you guys on another one please like comment subscribe peace